Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at creating a lightbox image, which essentially, if you're not familiar with the idea, is when you click on an image inside of a website, it actually brings up a preview of that image for you, and you can click anywhere else and it'll close out of that preview. This idea was brought up on my Discord server, so if you're not already a part of that, make sure you join in the link in the description down below. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you, so if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and you'll get plenty more videos just like this one. So to get started, I'm just going to show a quick demo of what the application is going to do, and this is the finished version on the right here. You can see we have a grid of nine different images, even the one that's hidden behind me, and when I click on any of these different images, it's going to pop up a larger version of that image with a nice border, darken everything else, and then when we click outside that image, it's going to close it for us. And this is the idea of that light box effect that I talked about earlier. So to get started with this, we're going to need to create HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to get everything working. And the easiest place to get started is almost always the HTML. So we'll create a file called index.html. And if we click exclamation point plus enter, that's going to generate the boilerplate HTML code for us. And we can just come in here, use light box as our title, and now we have some HTML that we can render to our application. And if we just right click here, click open with live server, this is a Visual Studio Code extension, which you should install if you don't already have. So we can click that and it'll essentially just open this application up. And you can see we just have a blank page right now since we don't have any HTML. Now to get started, we're gonna put these images here inside of a grid. So over here, let's create a div with the class of grid, just so we can style that in CSS later. And we're gonna put all of our images inside of here. So we're going to use an image tag and then a source to where we want our image to come from. And there's a website called Unsplash, which will allow you to essentially put in placeholder images inside your application really easily. So if we just type in HTTPS colon backslash backslash, just like this source dot unsplash dot com, whoop, dot com slash. And then we put whatever size we want. So for our case, we're going to do a 400 by 400 image, just like that. And then afterwards here, we can put some kind of query if we want. In our case, we want this to be a mountain. Now, if we close that off, save and go over here, you can see we have a 400 by 400 mountain showing up inside of our application. And we're going to actually do this nine different times. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're just going to change these to be different properties because right now, if we save this, you see we're going to get a bunch of the same image. So we're just going to change our search queue here to be a bunch of different nature related things. So we're going to have like a valley, for example, maybe a beach. Whoops. Right here, we got the ocean. Let's do water, maybe trees, a lake. And lastly, come down here and we can just do cliff. Now, if we save that, we should have a bunch of unique images, which are all kind of related around this nature theme. And they're all showing up down here, which is perfect for us. And every time we refresh our page, it's going to give us different images based on these search terms, which is perfect for our use case. Now that's going to be all of the HTML that we need to create this effect. So now let's create two more sheets. We're going to have a style sheet, which is called styles.css. And we're going to have JavaScript, which we're just going to call script.js. And before we get started on any of those, let's actually include them in our application. So first we're going to include a link, which is going to our styles.css. And we also want to include a script tag. And this script tag is going to have here the defer attribute, this will just make it so it loads and runs after our application HTML is loaded. This is just so that we don't have to worry about waiting until our document is done being ready. And we don't have to include it at the bottom of the body. It just makes everything easier. And then we're also going to put our source as our script.js. Now our JavaScript and style sheet are both being loaded into our application. And we can jump into what our styles are going to look like for our application. The first thing that I want to start with is actually styling the grid for our images. So we can select that by just saying dot grid. This is going to be our grid class. And we're going to use display grid in order to set this up. And if you're not familiar with CSS grid, I have an entire video covering CSS grid, which you can check out in the cards linked above or in the description down below. So continuing on, we're going to put some grid template columns in here. This is how we define our columns. And we just want to say we want to repeat the same column three times. And we want that column to be 200 pixels wide. Now, if we save that immediately, you see, we're going to get these 200 pixel wide columns. This one's 200 pixels, this one's 200 pixels, and this one looks like it's larger, but it just overflows our grid, which is fine for now. Next, we wanna make sure we justify our content in the center. This is going to align us in the center horizontally. And we wanna do the same thing with our content center here for aligning our content. 
This is going to be for our vertical alignment. We want a small gap between our pictures. So we're just going to say maybe 10 pixels, for example. And lastly, in order to make it so we perfectly are centered in our screen, we're going to make our grid the height of the entire view height, 100%. And we're going to go up to our body and we're going to remove all the margins. This is just going to get rid of the small gap you see here. Now, if we save that, you can see that everything is aligned in the center. We still have a gap over here, and that's just because our images are overflowing all the way over under the side, which we do not want. So in order to get rid of that, we're just going to select all of the images inside of our grid and make sure that they are a width of 200 pixels and a height here of 200 pixels. This will fall into our grid template column size. Now, if we save that, you see we get that same exact grid that we have over in this example over here. Now, before we get too far into the rest of our CSS, we actually need to set up our light box element, which is going to be the element that shows up here when we click on an image, this entire black background plus the image. So in order to set that up, we're going to actually do that in JavaScript instead of HTML. It'll just make it work on any page we include this script. So to do that, we're just going to create an element. We're going to call it lightbox, and we just use document.createElement. This is going to create an element for us of the type div. And then we can come in here and say that the ID for our lightbox is going to be lightbox. This will just make it so we can select this element easily inside of our CSS. Once we have that done, we can just append this to the end of our body. So we can say we want document.body.appendChild, and we can append our lightbox onto the end of our child. Right now, you're going to notice nothing is actually going to happen. Our lightbox is not going to be there, but we can actually style our lightbox. It's just nothing right now. It's an empty div, so it won't show up. But if we apply some styles to it, we'll be able to see what it looks like. And we want to style it so it looks essentially just like this. So the first thing we need to do in order to do that is come down here, select our light box. And when we select our light box, we want it to be displayed always in the very center of our screen like this. So what we can use is we can use position of fixed. This is going to make it so it's always going to follow us no matter where we are on the page, no matter how far we scroll down or up, it's just going to follow us. Next thing we can do is we want it to always be on the top. So we're just going to give it a really large Z index so it'll be above everything else no matter what. Also, we want to set here the top to be zero. We want to set a width of 100% and a height of 100%. Essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to make it fill and stretch over the entirety of our screen. And we can actually see this by making the background color here equal to a background color of RGBA. We're just going to do 0, 0, 0. This is completely black with 80% transparency or opacity, I mean. So now when we save that, we come over here, you see our light box is now covering everything inside of our application, this giant black area. If we get rid of our width, for example, you'll see it's gone because now it's a zero width. Let's put that back in. And by default, we don't want this light box to show up. So we're actually going to give this light box here a display whoops, of none. This just means that by default, our box is completely gone and it's not going to show up. But we do want our light box to show up if it has the class of active. So when we have the class of active applied to our light box, we want it to show up. And to do that, we're going to use display of flex. And we want to make sure that everything inside of this light box is always dead center. So we're going to do make sure we have here our justify content in the center and our line items in the center. And now when we have an active light box, whatever we put in it, in our case, this image will be dead center inside of that light box, which is in the center of our screen always. Now with this out of the way, we can move on to finishing the rest of our JavaScript. So inside of our JavaScript, we want to be able to select all of our images. So we can do that really easily by using document.querySelectorAll, and we just want to get all of the images. So we can just say IMG. This will get every single image tag on our entire page. For your case, you may want to use a different selector because you may not want all images to do this, but in our case, every image will work perfectly for this. Next, we want to loop through all of our images. So we can just say images for each, and we want to do this for each image that we have. We want to run this function. And inside of here, we essentially want to set up our click event listeners. So we can just say image .add event listener, and we want to add a click event listener. And every time we click, we want to run the code inside of this function, which we want to make sure that our light box is shown and that we add our image to the light box. So we can take our light box class list, and we want to add that active class. So now every time we click on an image, it should make our light box active. And we can actually just test this real quick. By default, our active light box is not shown, but when we click an image, you can see that now our light box is being shown up. So this is working perfectly. You may also notice that when we hover over an image, let me refresh, we're not getting the correct cursor. So if we go back into our styles 
and we just come up here, we just want to change our cursor here to be pointer. And if we save that, you can see we get this nice pointer cursor to know that these are clickable. This just makes it easy for the user to know what's going on, and it still works just fine when we click on that light box. Back into our script here, the next thing we need to do is add our image to that light box. So let's get a new image. We're just going to call this image, and we're going to create a new element. So document dot create element, and we want to create an image tag just like this. And essentially, we just want to set the source of our image equal to our current image source, just like this. So now our new image is essentially exactly the same as our current image. And what we can do is add that to our lightbox. So we can say lightbox dot append child, and we want to append our image to it just like that. Now if we save and we click on an image, for example, we click on this one, you can see our image is now being shown up in there. But we do have a few problems right now when we click outside of it, it doesn't actually disappear. So let's set up that logic real quick. And this is actually really easy. We just want to take our light box. We want to add an event listener for a click, just like this. And inside of here, what we want to do is we want to run this function. And all we want to do is just take our light box and we want to get our class list again. And we just want to remove that active class, which will essentially hide our light box. So now if I save that, click an image and click away, it's going to hide it. But there's a few bugs with our code right now. For example, if we click on another image, you can see both of our images are being shown up. And that's because we're never removing anything from our lightbox. Also, if we click on an image, it actually closes our lightbox because we're not checking to make sure we're only clicking on the black section and not the image section. First, let's tackle that image versus black section because it's a very easy fix. All we need to do is check that if our e.target, this is essentially what we click on, so e.target is what we click on, we want to check if that is not equal to e.currentTarget. And the current target is the thing we added the event listener to. So we're saying, if we click on something that's not the light box, for example, our image, what we want to do is we just want to return. We don't want to exit out of here. And now if we click this and click our image, you can see it no longer closes. But when we click this black section, it does close. Now moving on to the difficult task of where we have multiple images being shown up, this is actually really easy to fix. We just want to set up a while loop in here. And we want to say when the light box has a child, all we want to do is remove that child. So we can say lightbox dot remove child. We can pass it the first child. So essentially this is going to loop through and remove all of the children from our lightbox element. And then at the very end, add our new image. So now if we come over here, we click on this. You can see we get our image, click away, click again. We're getting a new image. And the very last thing we have left to do is just to style this because over here, as you can see, we have this nice little border around it and it just looks a little bit nicer. Over here, we don't have that. So let's go into our styles and add that. This is actually going to be very straightforward. We want to select our light box and we want to select the images inside of there. And what we can do is first, we want to set a max width of 90% and we want to set here a max height. We're going to use 80% in this case. Essentially, this just makes us our image isn't larger than our browser. It's never going to expand past our screen size. And we'll add a little bit of padding. So we're going to say four pixels, a background color, this is going to be black, and we want here a border, which is going to be two pixels, solid white. And now if we save that, you can see we get that nice little black border. This comes from the combination of padding and background color. And then our white border comes from our border section right here. If we remove this padding, for example, we no longer get that black section. So our padding defines how large the black is. For example, we can make it very large by putting eight, and it's going to be even bigger than it was before, as you can see. And it actually gives it a nice kind of cool effect or we can put it back to four and it's going to be about the same size as our border section. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.